Hey guys, Walker Peak here with Commercial Acoustics. Today we're going to look at the Sabin's calculation and how it's used to determine the reverberation time in the room. Uh, this is a very basic, straightforward um, calculation. You can see it's right here. Basically it's saying the RT60 value, which is how long it takes for an impulse noise or, or a noise source to drop by 60 decibels. And it's calculated by 0.05 times the volume of the room divided by the savings in the room. And I'll walk you through that in just a minute. Um, basically right here, you know, we just put in the name and dates and you guys can see the video where we actually perform this exercise and measure the reverberation time. Uh, here we'll calculate and see how far off the calculator is from the actual uh, measurements in the field. The, no, or the uh, room was 16 feet by 12 by 10, so the volume is just these three multiplied 1920 cubic feet. The wall surfaces, uh, four walls, you can put them all together, but sometimes you want to separate them in case certain walls are, are glass or something. Um, and you use the coefficient of absorption. Uh, in our online calculator here, um, if you place these exact same values in, you will get the same, um, the same measurement, the same estimate. However, the NRC values, the noise reduction coefficient values, or sometimes called the coefficient of absorption, is already calculated in there. So you put in the drywall or concrete, and we already tell you how much it absorbs. Um, likewise here, the area of each wall is just the width times the height or the length times the height for each wall is a little different. Um, and the savings of that wall, so how much absorptive value it has in layman's terms, is simply its area times the coefficient of, coefficient of absorption. Um, so here, for instance, um, if I change the flooring surface from concrete to carpet, then I know that that jumps the NRC value up to 0.4 there. And right here, you can see the estimated reverb time in the space goes from 0.73 to 0.51 by just adding carpet in a, in a relatively small room like this. Um, so in our example, we had a concrete floor, drywall ceiling. Um, these are your standard coefficients of absorption for painted drywall and sealed concrete. And multiplied by the area, we calculated total 132 sabins in the space. Um, we go back to our handy formula, 0.05 times the volume divided by the number of sabins. And that is how we calculate an estimated reverberation time of 0.73 seconds. Um, just so happens that when we measured this in the field with an SPL meter and with a phone, we got 0.69 and 0.72 seconds respectively. So you can see that in a basic rectangular prism, there's no ge geometric adjustment here. Um, you're going to be very close with the Sabin's calc um, to what you will measure in the field. Last thing you want to look at is your desired RT60. Um, once again, you can go back and look at uh, some of our graphics on the website. You know, in an open office, you can have a 1.0. Uh, whereas in schools, classrooms, LEED and, and other uh, ANSI standards require a 0.7 or lower 0.6 in many cases. Um, and some churches and cathedrals, you want the sound to ring out. So it, it depends on your use of the space. A common question we get is, um, I don't see it here, but it, it is for um, restaurants lively restaurants where it's a sports bar or something like that, you could use a 1.1 second reverb time. Um, whereas an intimate restaurant, a, a romantic Italian diner or something like that, you might want to be closer to 0 0.7. So it really does depend on what your desired time is and your estimated time. And from there, you can determine exactly how many panels or acoustic wall treatments or what other type of acoustic treatments to uh, consider and how much. Hope this was helpful. Uh, we'll put some links down below with some of our NRC values and target reverb times. And um, feel free to give us a call with any questions. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, next time. Thanks.